Right, so um, for this little bit of a um, session, I've kind of used a different approach. So rather than using the computer to be the total control for all of these bits and pieces, um, I'm using this little product here, the Electron OctaTrack. Now, the OctaTrack is an incredibly powerful 8-channel sampler, performance sampler, and MIDI sequencer as well. So in terms of the routing, what we've got is this is kind of like the brains of it. This is where all the sequencing and all the notes are being fired off from. Um, and I've also got the launch control to control this thing. This is a really nice thing to be able to do. Using the launch control editor, which I have up on the computer here, I've been able to reprogram in the user mode all of these knobs and faders to be a direct controller for this. Now one of the really big advantages is here that I've got six encoders and it's very menu based so I have to go through the different tracks and I can access different pages. But with this thing, I can basically access all aspects of the Octatrack just directly from this. And also I get nice fader control. So this is sending a MIDI signal into the uh, Octatrack, the MIDI interface that I've got here. The MIDI out signal is going into the Ultranova. That is then passing from the MIDI through over to the base station. So basically this is the first thing in the chain, feeds into here and then on through the synths as well. So I'm going to start this thing off. Um, and at present, no sounds coming through. What I've done is I've got a Q output here. So this is a second set of outputs. I'm going to take a feed into the bass station. Now, to be able to hear that, I need to trigger a sound. So if I just um, latch a note there, I'm going to bring down the oscillators, so the actual generators, and then I'm going to bring up the external inputs through the base station. This is now passing what I've got from the Octatrack through the filter section of the base station. So this is a really nice thing on base station. You can really start to use the filter as a kind of a filter bank effect and get some really nice um, sort of chunky filtery sounds. Runs through the distortion as well so we can get some really gnarly, nasty, gritty sounds using that. Um, so you know that's a really nice thing to play with. Um, if I was so minded I could put the arpeggiator on as well. That would trigger notes and also trigger the envelope. So, so we can start to get a bit of modulation in on the filter as well. So anyway, I'm just going to do this little filter sweep. And as I said before, um, we've also got um, the faders controlling the tracks on the octa track. So if I bring this in now. And then what we can do is just bring the external input out, just take that filtered sound out. So now we've got control over the octa track. So at the top here, I have things like, for, here, for example, here I've got a filter, and if I just use this control here, this is on the master channel of the octa track. So this is affecting everything. So we've got this nice filter sound going on there. And this knob is actually controlling the delay control, but I've set this up to actually be a bit more of a repeater, so I can just get a little phrase in there and then just repeat it by quickly just turning that knob and then it's just gonna hold that. So, the next thing is, I'm going to bring in the Ultranova. Uh, Ultranova is set onto a MIDI channel, so if I go to my MIDI section here, you can see all of these are muted. Now, the top row of buttons are set to my audio channels for muting, the bottom row for my MIDI channels. So, I'm going to just fire off the Ultranova um, on channel 7, which I've got a nice MIDI sequence loaded in there, so in the right moment. Let's get a bit more volume on there. Ultranova. Now the great thing about the Ultranova is the fact that these knobs here are all touch sensitive. So if I go to touch mode here, I can really start to play around with the sound just simply by touching the, uh, touching the encoders. So it's just a really nice way of being able to just mess around with the sound to get something nice going. Right, now I'm going to go back to the base station and bring in the next part, and this is on a different preset. Even though the base station is an analogue synth, we can store patches in here, so it's a really useful thing. If you've got a live set and you just need different sounds throughout the whole set, instantly recall them just using the patch change button. So, on uh, the first MIDI channel, i.e. on the launch control XL, I've got set here, I'm just going to bring in this uh, kind of nice sort of uh, squelchy synth sound. Of course, with the base station, the really cool thing about this is just all the controls on the top panel, so you can just, just play around with it to your heart's content with this stuff and just really get some nice kind of feel for it. Of course, the 
change it up a bit. I can just bring some of the other stuff out using the faders here, so we just get to a, a nice, uh, yeah, nice sort of plumb So there's a bit of delay here on this hi hat side. So that's play with the filter again. We're bringing a second part for the ultranova now. Bring out the base station at this point, and then I've also got another base station part here on number three. So these are all set to um, a certain MIDI channel, which is feeding base station. These are all set to another mid uh, MIDI channel, which is feeding ultranova. So the nice thing is, just by muting and unmuting parts, I can basically get a nice bit of variation, a bit like clips, if you like, in Ableton, that sort of thing. So I'll take out the original Ultranova base station, and then I'm going to bring in, um, yeah, another part on, um, yeah, base station now. So. so now one of the really nice things on the new firmware update for the base station is the fact we can now trigger arpeggiators or arpeggios from um, an in, um, a MIDI input. Now this is, this is a new feature on the, uh, on the firmware. So if I turn on the arpeggiator, this is actually going to follow what the Octatrack is telling it to do. So, yeah, it's nice. And again I can play around with the different rhythms. Again, I've got some delay on the bass station here, coming from the Octatrack, which I can turn on and off here. So, again, nice way of just changing the sound, playing around with the sound. And when we're ready, we can bring in the other stuff. Now, on Ultranova, I've got another sound set up. Now, this is going to be a polyphonic sound. So, this means I can play chords and that sort of thing. And again, if I go to my touch, bring some reverb on that. Okay. So I'll bring this, uh, yeah, bring out this uh, base station part. And now I'm going to change pattern on the um, on the off track. Just hold the pattern button down, choose the patch. And here we've got different parts set up now. And on the base station channel, I've got a really quite an interesting thing that I've done. So I'm going to bring in this part. So on the base station now, I don't know if you can hear, but we've got two separate notes playing. Now the base station is a mono synth. Let's just bring down the rest of the stuff so we can hear it. Now, base station, as I say, mono synth, but we've got two oscillators. Now, a really nice thing on the Octatrack is a feature called parameter locks, and this means that for all of the steps that we've got here, these are the things that sort of trigger the notes and that sort of stuff, I can um, basically change the parameters per each of the steps. What I did was I MIDI learnt the pitch of the second oscillator here uh, to a control on the Octatrack. And that gave me the ability then to basically change the sound um, on a particular step and change the pitch of this oscillator, which is now giving us essentially um, almost like a paraphonic kind of behavior where we've got two notes playing but through a single filtered envelope control. So, so even though Bass Station is a mono synth, by using automation essentially, I mean you can do this sort of thing in our music software as well with Ableton and this sort of thing, easily automate this control, the second oscillator's pitch, and get more polyphonic sounds. And then back to that bass sound on the uh, Ultranova, I'm going to bring in that bass. And then again when we're ready for it we can bring in all the rest of the stuff as well and just have a bit of a play out.
much it. So that's the setup that we've got. It's a really nice thing to be able to work just with hardware. Um, it gives you a kind of a different approach to creating the um, creating the stuff. Um, what I find is I find it really um, kind of intuitive and nice just to play around on the instruments and just treat them like instruments, you know. Um, I think sometimes when I'm working on a computer, I get a bit bogged, back, bogged down with the detail, but with this, I can just set everything up and basically just have a good old jam. Um, so yeah, so that's the setup we've got. Octatrack being the kind of the brains of it, the computer, if you like. Launch control, controlling the Octatrack, which is in turn sequencing the Ultranova and the base station.